What's up YouTube? Hyperius here again. So now that the 7500 watt uh, killer e-bike is complete, I might as well show you the next project I'll be working on for probably the next two or three months here until uh, winter starts setting in. So this is a 2011 Zero XU. I bought it from a friend who was moving out of state. He originally bought it from SF Moto. Uh, this bike was being used as their parts bike. Essentially, uh, Zero has been notorious for kind of uh, shunning anything made over past 2011. Or I'm sorry, 2013. So anything older than 2013, they don't really give any parts or engineering manuals out for. So SF Moto was using this as a kind of a cannibal bike. Um, he bought it from them for about 200 bucks without a motor or battery or really anything other than just the frame and a few electronics up front on the handlebar. Um, he eventually got it working, quote unquote, using his uh, e-bike pack, and he jetted around on it and just around town and stuff like that. But ultimately, he wanted to completely build the thing back up using some kind of battery pack, uh, salvaged out of an electric car or something like that. Um, unfortunately, he had to move out of state, so he couldn't take this thing with him. But uh, he knew I also like to build electric vehicles as well, so he kind of pawned off the <laughs> he pawned off the project to me and. Uh, I grabbed it from him for about the same price he originally paid for it. So uh, this bike is Zero's cruiser model, kind of like their around town cruiser uh, for the 2011 era. Um, it doesn't use the S frame, the uh, Zero S, but it uses the Zero X frame, which is the same frame. It's a shared frame between their cruiser, which is the XU, and uh, their Moto Cross slash Dual Sport, which is the MX. Uh, both those frames, or these frames both on both those bikes uh, are relatively small in the battery compartment, but they are meant to share a battery. Uh, so the, basically the battery compartment right here, would, you'd be able to literally swap out, hot swap battery in and out, depending on what bike you wanted to use that day. Uh, this bike though, like I said, they basically cannibalized it and used it as a parts bike. So really it came with just a bare frame uh, the fender plastics and some controls up front. So, um, essentially he had nothing when he started, but, uh, he went ahead and ordered a, uh, motorcycle kit from, uh, Golden Motor and Golden Motor Canada, actually, uh, Golden Motor Canada produces a five kilowatt, uh, electric motorcycle and electric car motor. Um, these five kilowatt motors, I know from various members on the Endless Sphere for forums, uh, say they can push way more than five kilowatts. Uh, something like 15 to 20 kilowatts is within the range of acceptable on these motors before you start running into heating issues. Uh, I plan at running it at 15 kilowatts just so I'm just on the edge of when heat starts to become a problem. Um, I upgraded the fan on the inside of it so that it should cool better when it's at uh, load or running. Uh, hopefully there's no real heating issues. Around here it doesn't get hot enough where that becomes a problem, so I don't really expect it. Uh, additionally, uh, when my friend uh, bought this bike, he also bought the Golden Motor kit that came with a 72 volt, 300 amp uh, Golden Motor controller. That controller might cause a problem for me because it's 72 volt and I want to run this bike at 48. This bike doesn't have a big enough battery compartment like I said earlier, to really run any kind of decently long range and high voltage pack. Uh, it's kind of a trade off, you either get high voltage or you get longer range. I want the longer range just for the safety net, so I'm going to run it at 48 volts, 64 amp hours. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to basically buy reclaimed Nissan Leaf modules and shove in here. That's what I kind of got the cardboard set up right now. I'm doing cardboard aided design, CAD. <laughs> So uh, I'll be able to figure out the sizing I need for the Nissan LEAF modules. So as you can see, this box right here equals two Nissan LEAF modules stacked. And then this one would be five. And Nissan LEAF modules are uh, 2S uh, at 64 amp hours. So they'll give me 14S total, uh, 14 cells. Uh, which will give me 52 technically volts, but I'm going to be running it on 48 volt controller and I'm just going to double check, make sure the caps will take it, but I'm pretty positive they will. Uh, so 52 volt, 
battery pack, plus 48 volt controller, uh, plus 300 amps. Uh, it's going to be ridiculously high amount of torque. Uh, that's why I'm probably going to be changing out the sprocket on the motor here. Uh, sprocket right now is, I think it's uh, one and a quarter, uh, one and a quarter inch sprocket. So I'll need to change it out for something a bit larger uh, to be able to uh, mount the chain to because I do want to spin this thing for higher speed, less torque. Right now it's kind of geared for to be a torque monster, put it up on one wheel even if it weighs a ton to the battery packs. Uh, but like I said, I want to get higher speed out of it instead of higher torque. Uh, let's see, up front I'm going to be probably putting a cycle analyst just as the main gear cl or ga gauge cluster up front. Uh, Partly because, like I said, Zero has been really bad about offering uh, parts and everything like that for older generation bikes. So I can't, for the life of me, find any kind of gauge clusters for anything older than 2013. If anybody knows where that is, that'd be a big help. I've looked everywhere from, uh, you know, like third parties from China all the way to uh, salvage yards and things like that to see if there's any kind of salvage X series bikes out there literally nothing because I honestly think and I haven't looked up the numbers yet but I honestly think that in 2011 zero shipped only something like a thousand bikes uh, and out of those thousand something like 500 were the X frame design like this is and out of those 500 probably less than a hundred to 200 or less than a hundred to 150 of them were the XU models everything else was the MX dual sport series so I think the biggest problem I have is that I'm trying to find parts for a bike that hardly exists. Uh, <laughs> so I might have to just custom build a lot of the things to get this thing back on the road myself. Um, I mean, up front, it's, you know, pretty standard twist throttle, uh, nice rear view mirrors, because it, like I said, it's a town cruiser. It's, it's not meant to be a street bike or a race bike or or crotch rocket or anything like that. Um, I'm well. I'm gonna turn it into a crotch rocket, but it's gonna be kind of a kind of a stealth crotch rocket. <laughs> uh, down here, you can see where the original, because this thing uh, in 2011 they originally made these with uh, DC brushed motors. So down here, you can see the uh, original motor mount that actually fits perfectly with the golden motor. So I don't really have to do anything to the motor mount, which is awesome because I have no engineering documentations to figure out what's structural in this frame and what's not. Uh, the one thing I do need to do though, and you can kind of see what my friend did here, is uh, he made an aluminum faceplate to kind of raise the, uh, the facing of the motor up because there's this little lip here. This little lip interferes with the, uh, with the motor mount a little bit, and that motor mount uh, will cause jiggliness if you don't have a faceplate. The funny thing about this faceplate is, is that he took, I think it was like sheet metal shears or something like that, and cut apart a Mac Pro. So this is a 2008 Mac Pro case that he just shredded apart to be able to use as a, a ghetto motor mount. But hey, it works. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, make fun of it because if it's stupid but it works, is it really that stupid? Yeah, it's pretty stupid. I'm going to probably just replace that with like a water jet cut piece of aluminum or something. But uh, uh, it works for now. So um, I plan on putting a chain kit in here. Um, I thought of doing like a uh, carbon fiber belt. But when I looked at the torque figures of this motor, the carbon fiber belt uh, probably would not snap on first use, but uh, probably pretty quickly wear out. So... Um, chain is really the only option for the amount of torque I'm going to be putting through this. Uh, like I said, the battery box is, is pretty small, so um, I plan on just using Nissan Leafs one like one series of Nissan Leafs cells stacked, so uh, for a total of 14 cells, one S or one P. Um, up front, there's a decent amount of space here, and um, the majority of that's going to be. Uh, chargers and uh, charging equipment things like that i'm going to be putting either i can't i haven't decided yet whether or not i want to do a uh a mean well charger at 48 volts and just direct feed that into the bms or if i want to do like a psycho satiator from grin technologies where 
their satiator, from what I understand, it can charge up to 85% and then it holds the battery there. So it gives you longer battery cycle life, but uh, it, it's kind of kind of one of the things I got to sketch out on paper and see whether or not I want to do before I went ahead and dive in on either of those. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's pretty bare bones, but like I said, this is going to be my next project for a couple months. So, um, it's not going to go away and I'm going to give you guys status updates, uh, on as each new system gets put in, uh, right now on order, I have, uh, two of the Nissan Leaf cells. So I'll be able to do some sizing, uh, for the actual battery box. Um, but until those come in, there's not really much to say, uh, yeah, like I said, it's 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 my next month's or two's project, and I'll keep you guys updated as long as possible. All right, thanks.